Okay, we've got the Ingenhaus apparatus here, which is a conduction demonstration. You've got samples of copper, iron, lead, brass, zinc, and aluminium. Coated them with some uh, tea light -like wax there. It's used red so that it shows clearly. We did try with some white wax, but didn't really show that clearly. Um, then I modified this apparatus, because really I think it should be on its side. And I'm gonna put the, um, put the hot water inside, and then we'll see the conduction as it progresses through the um, machine. It might be a little bit messy, tipping this in. Ooh, there you go, that's better. Maybe a funnel would be better used there. Now, the other side of those metal rods is exposed to the hot water. It's not the quickest experiment in the world, I don't think. Don't want to overfill the container, but it's well over halfway now, I think, so as long as the rods are submerged, that's the main thing. Okay, there you go. So we'll see now the progression of conduction along the rods. Let me just wipe the top of this. And I'll put the bung in just to maintain the temperature a little bit. Not going to make a huge difference. Whether you, I've seen a lot of these units that are open topped, so it doesn't really matter. Probably best as a, as a video this I thought because it takes too long really in a class to show unless you come, keep coming back to it. Might even make this a time, a time lapse version of this as well at some stage. So it's called the Ingenhaus apparatus. There is another piece of Ingenhaus apparatus to do with biology I believe uh, but this is obviously conduction. It used to come up a lot in old WJC questions. Right, oh, there we go. We can already see the aluminium and the copper starting to melt the wax quite readily there. So there's the aluminium and there's the copper on the other end. Not much happening with the iron or the lead or the brass really at the moment. There you go, the copper. Copper's a bit behind aluminium, often I found with experiments, even though you'd imagine copper would melt first, it doesn't always, there's a little bit of tolerance in the experiment. Now you can see the aluminium is completely melted already, okay? Copper is still melting, the wax, not too far behind though. Oh, zinc is starting to go now. And the aluminium is completely clear now of wax. We could talk about fair testing, maybe there's a bit too much of a globule of, of wax on the copper, taking longer to melt it, obviously, then. But the general trend should be revealed about conductivity through various metals. So still not much happening with the iron. Copper's dropping loads. It's always good to have a tray underneath these kind of things. Easy to pick off the wax once it's dried though. So the copper is still not quite, as I said, I think there's quite a lot of volume of wax on the end of the copper. It'll probably all drop off at once now, I imagine. But we sort of seem to have copper, and well, aluminium copper, then zinc and brass are kind of vying for the next position. Lead and iron, not much happening with those, okay? Oh, there we go, the whole of the copper is gone now, okay. When I've done the experiment with the ring quite often, the aluminium, depending on exactly where you place the Bunsen burner centrally, the aluminium sometimes melts the wax before the copper. But you could discuss this as a talking point with students, you can show them the data, about what you'd expect beforehand or maybe afterwards. You can see there's not much happening with the others, really. The zinc is melting, it's about halfway there, and the brass. Still very hot, the water inside. But you can see that the iron and the lead, not much happening at all there. Let me see if I can zoom in a little bit. Yeah, as you can see, there's hardly any change there, really. I think maybe the iron is melted a little bit, you can see there it dropped as I was talking. 
So there's been a little bit of change with the iron, but the lead, not much. Again, you, this could link to the uses of lead in the past. Oh, the zinc is about to go. Almost, almost all of it gone. Just a little bit left now that will melt and then the rest will fall off. So zinc is, oh, it's traveling back up the rod now. There you go, zinc is completely gone now as well. Brass is the next one. Then iron, then lead. I think we could wait all day for the lead, to be honest. Really doesn't seem to be changing hardly at all there, okay? Which is expected, but uh, worth pointing out. So, I think in the next couple of minutes the brass would go as well. You could talk about what brass is made of with students. But the lead, hardly anything. The iron is going. I mean, on the side, I can see that it's melted quite a lot underneath here. Got to be careful with this when you do this experiment that the bungs are really tight in if you're going to have it on its side. This particular vessel wasn't designed to be on its side, designed to be vertical, but I couldn't really get it to work very well vertically. The whole of the wax would just slide down, which wasn't really what I wanted. So we'll wait for, we'll probably leave it when, to stop the video when the, when the brass melts. The wax, which shouldn't be too long. Bit of a clean up after this one, but uh, it's not too bad once uh, the wax freezes again. I found the tea light wax was really good for this, just in terms of it's got quite a low melting point, I think. I did try it with a candle. I mean, it's a different, not really the right color either, but this has got a higher melting point than the tea light that we used. And it was quite quick to get the wax on. Just made it, uh, put in a boiling tube, the wax, surrounded it in a hot water bath, um, just boiling water. And um, then, then I swapped the beaker that I was bathing it in and put cold water in. And then a couple of, like half a minute later, took it out and then I just dipped the rods in and it coated it nice and easy. There you go, though. so the brass is gone. The next one is the iron, but you know, I think it'd be the world's longest video, I think, waiting for it all to melt. But you can see that um, the iron is, is melting a little bit. I'll take the video out of this holster, and we'll just have a little look at the end of the iron. So you can see that the iron is melting there, okay? There's just no sign at all there with the uh, lead. Obviously copper is fine there, and brass, and uh, zinc, and of course aluminium, okay? So that is the Ingenhaus apparatus.